a view of the underside of the transceiver. The first thing you can notice is that all of the wiring and cabling have been replaced. In the case of the cabling, it's all Teflon coated, shielded, and stranded silver wire that is of slightly larger gauge than originally used. And the same is true with the point-to-point uh, -point wiring. It's of a heavier gauge, Teflon coated and silvered stranded wire. This area here, which uh, is composed of the crystal filters for CW and sideband, was one of the notoriously poor performing areas of the transceiver. Originally there was a mechanical arrangement which switched between sideband and CW. I've eliminated all of the mechanical switches and levers, uh, which is kind of a Rube Goldberg uh, <laughs> arrangement to begin with, and replaced it with uh, high quality relays, uh, gold plated relays on both the input and output. Now when it comes to relays you need a, a voltage to operate them. In this case here there's a 12 volt regulator uh, supplying uh, voltage which is switched from a, the front panel and you'll actually see a number of uh, regulators throughout. This is a 5 volt regulator down here. I have a number of other ones throughout uh, that are used to uh, power the, the different modifications uh, that I've made to the transceiver. This area down here is where the crystals are located for upper and lower sideband and CW. I've added some capacitors either in series or parallel so that I could move each crystal to the exact center of the passband. Uh, over time crystals tend to change in frequency and rather than buy new crystals I thought it was uh, uh, perfectly acceptable to just add these high quality capacitors and uh, just tune them to the appropriate frequency. You can also see throughout that uh, the hardware has been replaced with all stainless steel. Uh, the resistors and capacitors are all upgraded, as well as all of the connectors on the rear apron. They're all gold-plated now, except for the RF out, which was originally an RCA phono jack. It's now a BNC connector. This area over here, which you can probably see in here, is one of the gears for the VFO. Those gears are actually from a Mead uh, telescope mount that I had uh, disassembled and modified. And I had these gears left over. They seemed to fit in there and had the right size shaft, so they pr produced a uh, a frequency of tuning that seemed adequate. It wasn't too fast or too slow. So that just about covers the bottom of the transceiver, and I'll now move on to the power supply. Here's the converted HP23 power supply. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail uh, unless I get some requests, but you can see the transformer that I rewound. It's about four hours into that. <laughs> Very tedious over several days. And here's the circuit board uh, from Sunlight Energy Systems. And I added a little fan there to help keep things cool on those hot summer days. Uh, there is some additional circuitry changes uh, underneath the power supply, but uh, rather than make this uh, too long, uh, I'll just wait and see if there are any requests for additional uh, details. Anyhow, that's the end of part two for this unique SB102. Thanks very much for tuning in, and again, this is KS1U, clear and listening.